It used to be that you could count on every family owning at least one book, the Holy Bible. Well, America, make room on the shelf for one more. Yes, my brand new book, an inconvenient book, available now at glenbeck.com. And while it may not be filled with, you know, quite as much wisdom as the good book, it's this close. And, you know, being humble is a Christian virtue. Chapter 8 is uh, called Education Through Indoctrination. It tells the tale of how our kids in college aren't being taught. They're being force-fed one liberal, socialist, anti-American point of view, one right after another. You don't have to take my word for it. Ben Stein is also the author of a new book, Real Stars, and he has a brand new documentary coming out called Expelled, No Intelligence Allowed, that shows wholesale attempts by the scientific and university communities to push their agenda uh, down the throats of our children. And nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I've been watching you with great glee. You know, he said to me right before we went on the air that you thought that I was doing a parody of a conservative. Right, because you're so conservative. Yeah. yeah. You're <laughs> awfully good. You're Thank awfully you. good. Thank you very much. Okay. Tell me about what you found about indoctrination when it comes to God uh, in our schools. Well, this was a, for a documentary which, as you say, is called Expel, No Intelligence Allowed. We were studying what are kids taught about evolution, what are they taught about how life originated. What we found is that if you question evolution at all, you have a good chance of losing tenure, you have a good chance of getting fired, losing your grant, you're out of there. Uh, and yet, evolution and Darwinism do not explain an awful lot about life. Darwin said nothing about how life originated. Darwin had no idea of how complicated the cell was. Darwin was never able to point to any clear evidence of any species that had originated by evolution. Uh, and there hasn't been much progress in Darwinism since then. And, but we found that if you even question the established church of Darwinism, bang, you're but gone. What about um, uh, a first cause or uh, intelligent design? Well, the I mean, first cause is not, it's lightning striking a mud puddle. See, this is what the evolutionists say. And by the way, they may be right. I, you know, I'm not a scientist. They could be right. Evolution struck a mud puddle, and out of that mud puddle came a fully equipped Boeing 747. <laughs> Because a human cell, or a plant cell, or a, a frog cell, has hundreds of thousands of very complicated moving parts, all of which have to work together in exact synchronization with each other to build the cell, repair the cell, and reproduce the cell. Darwin thought it was just jello inside the cell. No. Very complicated. How that happened by lightning striking a mud puddle is a very good question. And, and if you ask that question, you better start looking for another job or have rich parents or something. I tell you, I, um, a good friend of mine said, because my, my daughter wants to go to Columbia University, and I said, I went to Columbia. It's a great place. Yeah, well, I, 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 I said, you know, you'll never get on campus with me. Whatever you do, change your last name. Don't ever, you know, say that. There are plenty of people named Beck. She, yeah, won't, have so she won't have any So she can go right. in the witness protection program. Right. Um, uh, but a good friend of mine said, you should send her. Just make sure she's armed against the professor so she knows she can hear both sides. I have no problem with hearing both sides.
You know, you want to say well, it was it. evolution, well, but they won't ever they present won't the ever, other side. No, they won't ever listen to the other side. And what I kept wondering when I was working on this documentary is, if they're so sure they're right, what are they afraid of? If they're so sure that their position is unassailable, let the other guy talk and then blow him out of the water and say, you fool, you didn't know this, this, and this. But when I talk to people who are Darwinists or evolutionists and say, well, how did life begin, They're, they don't have an answer. I mean, they have an answer, but it's a BS answer. It's an answer that wouldn't make sense to a small child. It's not a real answer. I know you're going to be on the radio program with me tomorrow, and I want to talk to you about the economy tomorrow. I want to talk to you a little bit more about um, uh, the worst-case scenarios that you found in the video. But uh, real quick, you also wrote a book about uh, real stars. Well, the real stars, I live in Malibu part of the week. People say to me all the time, uh, how, what's it like living near Barbara Streisand, Nick Nolte, and Martin Sheen? They're stars. What's it like living near stars? I said, I don't live near the real stars. The real stars are in Baghdad, Ar Ramadi, and Kirkuk, Mosul, Fallujah, wearing bo body armor in 130 degree heat. They're patrolling all over Afghanistan. They're risking their lives moment by moment. They're buried in Section 60 of Arlington National Cemetery. They're in the amputee ward, Ward 57, at uh, Walter Reed Army Medical Center. They're the real stars. They're the ones who should have won the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. They're the ones who give up everything for us. Ben, thank you very much. Thank you we'll so talk much. To you tomorrow. Thank